Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Pretty good show up ahead, I have to say. We'll be talking to a leader of one of the many airport protests that swept the nation and may have kept you from missing your flight. We'll also be debuting a new segment looking at what our top journalists really think when well, they're not writing or on camera. Pretty interesting. But first, President Donald Trump's executive order, his command that citizens of seven Muslim-majority nations not be allowed into the U.S., at least temporarily, was greeted with astonishing hostility from both the left and even fellow party members on the Republican side. The White House is not backing down, though, and Press Secretary Sean Spicer claimed the meltdown over the weekend was utterly unjustified. Here's part of what he said. This has been blown way out of proportion and exaggerated. Again, you talk about in a 24-hour period, 325,000 people from other countries flew in through our airports, and we're talking about 109 people. It's a shame that people were inconvenienced, obviously, but at the end of the day, we're talking about a couple hours. Being able to come to America is a privilege, not a right. Well, joining us now is one critic of the president's executive order, Mark Hetfield, the CEO and president of HIAS, an international refugee resettlement organization, indeed the oldest in the United States. Mark, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. So you issued a statement when this happened a couple of days ago, and part of it you said this. With the stroke of a pen, Donald Trump has abdicated American values. And you didn't explain what those values are or how you might be privy to them exclusively. But I compared that against the public polling on the question, and I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. So the majority, according to the Rasmussen poll, 57 percent agree with this. And there's also going back a long time, and I know you know this because you run this agency, strikingly low favorability on the question of whether we should admit refugees at all. So over the summer, just for example, um, there was a poll on should we admit Syrian refugees? 36 mm -hmm. percent supported it, 64 percent did not. Are they somehow not aware of American values or acting against American values? What do, you, what do you make of these people? Well, I mean, all I will say is that my organization works on behalf of the American Jewish community. Yep. If I went by polls, we would have closed down in the 19th century. Refugees have never been popular per se, right. which is why America slammed its doors on refugees in 1921, which is why six million people were trapped inside of Europe during the Holocaust and couldn't escape, because the United States and other countries failed to protect refugees, failed to allow people to flee. So wait, I don't, wait, I don't wait, 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 I'm sorry. You're saying that the Holocaust happened because of American immigration no, policy? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm not saying clarify. that at all. Okay. I'm not saying that. Because hundreds I, of thousands of Americans died fighting the Nazis. Ab absolutely, right. absolutely. But what did happen is America turned its back on refugees during that period, just like we're turning our back on refugees right now. We're not responsible for the crisis in Syria, but we do have some responsibility to protect the refugees who are fleeing for their lives. Okay. Well, I, I guess here's why I asked that first question. Mm -hmm. I think you've got a legitimate point of view. Lots of people I know are for admitting refugees, for sure. When you invoke the phrase American values, though, it suggests a, a set of absolute rules, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure I know what those rules are. Right. So let's get right to what the rules are sure. about American values, as you put it. So who has a right to come here? Um, who has a right to come here? I mean, yeah. it's not about having a right... To come here. It's about America standing up for refugees. So America has an obligation. I mean, I think we're saying basically the same thing. So no, America no. has an obligation. Refugees don't have a right to okay. come here per se, but a refugee who's been approved for refugee status by the United States government should be allowed to come okay. here, and they were all turned away. I had to deal, I had to spend my Saturday dealing with um, a Syrian mother, her five year old daughter, her eight year old, then their eight year old daughter who was trying to join her husband who had asylum in Connecticut. Right. They had an approval notice. They had been cleared and vetted. They got on a plane in Amman where they had been living as refugees right. for three years. They get to Kiev to connect to, to, to the flight to JFK, and they get turned around and get well, sent back to Amman. That sounds like a nightmare. I mean, I'm, I'm sympath nightmare. very sympathetic to them. I, t I am. But I want to get back to the core principle here because I think it's really sure. important. You're saying it is an American value to admit refugees, and I'm right. asking you what the standards are. There are a lot of 60 million refugees around the world, according to the United Nations, right. and there are countless hundreds of millions of other people fleeing, I don't know, poverty, bad government, bad education, no health care, starving to death in some right. cases. What percentage of those do we have an obligation under the American values you refer to to admit? It's, it's, well, you know what? I'll tell you one thing. The percentage is not zero. And so that's what's the, the percentage. I mean, but tell me what the being, criteria are. I'm I mean, not going to go over what, what, what percentage we're This is what you do for a living. Tell me, tell me. Sure. You invoked American values and suggested anyone who's against what you're for is somehow in contravention of American values. Well, it's a what? big thing to say. America has been welcoming refugees throughout its history with some very shameful interruptions, such as the interruption between 1921 and 1965. I got it. You said that. So, right. But, but you're not answering the question, mm -hmm. which is how do I know which refugees need to come here 
if I'm going to apply the American values that you're referring to? Like, what are the rules? If you're going to run around with moral statements like, mm -hmm. oh, you're a bad person because you're against refugees, tell me what the rules are so I can be a good person. Yeah, the, the rules are that you need to welcome those people who need protection. The United States needs to play a role. You see, the United States is a leader in refugee protection. And what makes us a leader isn't the number that we take. It's the way that we treat refugees when they come here. When a refugee comes to the United States, he's not known as a refugee. We don't put them in camps. We welcome them as new Americans. Them in camps? No, we spend a lot of money on them, huge amounts of money on them, as you know. We spend a lot of money in your organization, which takes a lot of tax dollars. Oh, I'm, but, but here's my, Tucker, and, no, 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 I'm not no, arguing no, against that. No, you're going to raise that, Tucker. I wanna, I'm glad you raised that. I'm really glad you raised that. I wasn't that. attacking you. It. I'm merely no. saying we're very generous. That's, that's the only point I'm making, yeah, I mean, and, no, I, and no, I think no, we should let be. Let me tell you how generous but you're, you are. No, 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 no. You, you are not answering the question, mm -hmm. which is, in a world where there are tens or hundreds of millions of people who are fleeing all sorts of awful things, mm -hmm. life or death situations, how do we know what our obligation is? You've said we have an obligation. You do this for a living. You've thought a lot about it. You're a smart guy. Mm -hmm. Tell me so I can evaluate all future policies through that lens. Right, well, and you're dodging it. Well, first of all, Tucker, you just said my organization takes a lot of tax dollars. So I'm obligated to respond to that. Okay. So let me respond Whatever. to it. Okay? okay, fine. Let me respond to but it. But get, get to my question, though. I will, I promise. Quickly, thanks. So we get, we get $2,075 per refugee. That is true from the State Department. What do we do with that? We pick them up at the airport. We bring them to the apartment, which we've rented. We pay three months' rent for that apartment. We stock it with food. We put furniture in it. Um, we get the kids in school. You're great. We get them to, me you we get them the to medical appointments. Great. I'm, okay? I'm, I'm glad. We get I'm, them I'm, transportation. Okay. But you're dodging the we question. We get them a job. We teach them English. I pay my staff with that money. $2,075. Okay. Try to pay rent for three months with that amount of money. Right. You know how we do it? Because we have to raise lots of private funds. We have lots of volunteers Look, who participate Mark, Mark, in this. Mark, you're a little defensive on the question. I would point out, we looked at your IRS forms. Actually, it looks like the majority of the money you get comes from taxpayers, just for the record. That's about correct. 60%. And I just told you. Right. That's fine. So they have an interest in knowing what the rules are, what right. the policy is, right. right? It's not just you and a private organization right. raising money from good-hearted people. Right. You're taking money from people by force through the tax code. The government's giving you money, <laughs> no, no, no. and it's our money. No. So just answer my question. How do we know when we have an obligation to let someone in? Why not let all 60 million in? Do we have an obligation to do that? And if not, no, why not? absolutely 60 not. 60 million fleeing from harm. Why don't we absolutely have an obligation not. to let them in? We have an obligation to see how can we play a role. How can the United, oh, States, how can the United States make, a, make refugees safe um, by, by taking some, and then allowing and, and then allowing the host country to um, okay. to protect you. Okay, you're not the answer. So let me see, here's no, I am one other point. Your I mean, but not with any specificity that's useful for we our viewers. For our viewers. Okay, okay, here's a point that you made in your statement: to deprive refugees of safe haven is to scapegoat vulnerable human beings Correct. and to confuse those who flee terror with terror itself. Now, Correct. I'll just stipulate: I think most refugees are in a tough spot, and I really feel for them, and I think they're probably really good people. Okay. But this they statement are. suggests that anybody who's worried about refugees maybe hurting Americans or hating America, and some do, is some kind of crackpot or a bad person. Yeah. And I just, I mean, I could read you the list of terror attacks or plots by refugees in the past couple of months. They're real. Not a ton of them, but there are some. Well, you can see that people have a right to be concerned. Or are they just all bigots? Oh. No, no, no. Of course. I mean, everybody who comes to this country should be screened, and refugees are screened more thoroughly than any immigrant, oh, than really? any American. Absolutely. So do you ask the refugees that you bring in, do you believe, for example, in female genital mutilation? Um, you know what? Hyas doesn't bring in refugees. Oh, you just said that you got them jobs and apartments and all that right, stuff. Do you ever right. ask any of those people whether they believe in the Constitution, think women should have rights, think gays should be killed? Do you ask them those questions? And if you don't, why don't you? You know what? Refugees tend to be very apolitical because they fled. Well, those aren't political questions, those are cultural questions. And do you ask, them, you're, these, you're helping these people come to this country. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you ask them, do you believe in the country Ref you're coming to? Refugees have one thing on their mind, which is they want a normal life. Well, I'm an they American. want to become Americans. But do they believe in the Constitution? That's a fair question to ask. I'm a US citizen, so you know you, what? why wouldn't you ask that question? Our refugees, one of the great things about this country is refugees are on a path to citizenship from the moment they enter, okay? Every refugee <laughs> wants to be <laughs> a citizen. Gonna, you're not going to answer any of my questions. And and they, and the, no, no, I, I'm going to eventually. I mean, part of that is to take a civil civics exam. Part of it is to swear allegiance to the Constitution. But isn't it kind of irresponsible so, yes. for you not to ask? Since you're, as you said, you're paying for their schooling, getting them jobs, teaching them English. You don't want a bunch of people who believe in female general mutilation coming in the country, do you? These people, some of them come from countries where it's almost universal. Why wouldn't you say, you know, we don't do that here? Why wouldn't you say that? Um, Homeland Security screens refugees, Why not highest. Oh. But you're taking all this money. I think you'd want to do that just yeah, as a I responsible you, I person. I told you how much money we get. I told you what we have to do with that money. <laughs>
Mark, we're out of time. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed it. I hope you did, too. Thank you. I did, too. Thanks. Well, Trump's executive order isn't just sparking defiance from protesters. It's also riling up the Justice Department.